Chapter 4 Tag Team Parenting As she lifted her panty-clad rump into the air, Benny felt the angry welts from her earlier paddling flare up in protest. Without her constraining shorts, she felt the cool air of her room brush against the fiery, flaming flesh of her fanny. Thwack! Umph! One, sir! Benny took a calming breath, her butt still hurt like mad, but at least it didn't feel like she was slowly roasting over a fire. That one small comfort helped her endure the vulnerability she felt. Smack! Ooch! Two! Thank you, sir! Benny added the thank you without thinking, speaking from the bottom of her heart. She felt the sting of the paddle stroke flare up before fading against the lingering soreness. Aho! Three! Thank you, sir! Benny felt both her mind and her bottom begin to numb. She still felt the fresh sting, but it was hazy and far away. Swat! Ho wee! Fa four! Thank you, sir! This time, Benny barely registered the sting of the paddle, more conscious of the rolling motion of her body as she accepted the blow and stayed in position. Thwap! Hiss! Five! Thank you, sir! Benny became aware of herself, outside of herself. It was as though she was floating on the ceiling like a guardian angel, looking down with approval at the scene below. Below her, she saw a bad little girl, getting precisely what she needed. Justice. What? Ow, ow, ow. As Benny caught her rattling breath, the need to obediently keep count drove pain from her mind. Phew. Six. Thank you, sir. Dad felt pity as he raised the paddle over Benny's trembling flanks. He'd only planned to give Benny twelve strokes at first, and she'd already taken twelve total. But he knew that Benny needed at least six strokes as the penalty for her earlier defiance. Crack. Benny felt snot stuffing her nose as she sucked down a breath. Gah. Seven. Thank you, sir. What? Arg. Eight. Eight, sir. Her resolve fading, Benny's face drooped to her bed, and she kicked and rubbed her feet together in a vain attempt to distract herself. Oh, ouch. Oh, daddy. No, please, daddy. What? <laughs> Benny bucked once, then put her hands on her head, trying to physically hold herself in position. E, e, e. Nine. Thank you, sir. I'm so sorry. I'm Sahare. Her legs aching from the strain. Benny sank into her bed, her tears now spilling freely, and her nose running. But she resisted the urge to shield her bottom and struggled shakily back into position. Waha! Two ten! Thank you, sir! Bah! Dad raised the paddle high, then relented. With a nod to Mom, Dad set the paddle down on Benny's bed. Of the twelve paddle strokes he'd intended to deliver, he decided that ten would suffice. After all, Benny still had a paddling from Mom to endure. That's enough. Good job, Benny. You stayed in position. Not sure if Benny heard him over the sound of her own sobs, Dad sat by her side and stroked the back of her shoulder. Good girl. Brave girl. Catching her breath, Benny's attention snapped up to catch her dad's eye. Then she lifted up from the bed to rest her weight on her knees and hugged him pressing her head down onto his shoulder and spilling fresh tears. Sob, thank you for spanking me, Daddy. Oh man, that hurt. I didn't think I was gonna make it. Dad smiled, surprised by how tall his little girl was getting, and patted the top of her head, mussing her brass-colored hair. Well, you've almost made it. Mom still has to spank you, remember? Take a minute to have a good cry and catch your breath. At the mention of her tears, Benny pulled back from the embrace and wiped at her face stupidly before giving up and hugging her dad again, ignoring the second wave of tears. Yes, I remember. Schniff, Mama, are you really gonna spank me again? Mom smiled, touched by the sight of seeing her husband comfort her daughter. Of course I'm going to spank you, Benny. I do feel sorry for you, but I also don't want you getting the idea that dad's the only one who can paddle your rump right and proper. Benny's lip trembled as she glanced furtively at the attitude adjuster resting next to her. Then she shook her head, put on a resolute game face, and turned back to face Mom, nodding furiously.
Yes, ma'am. Um, can we start right now? I can't stand the tension. Mom pointed to the paddle resting next to Benny. Very well. Benita, Bonnie Backcook, hand me the attitude adjuster. Benny tensed at the sound of hearing Mom utter her full legal name. She felt the welts from her paddling scream in anger as she bent over to scoop up the paddle, then held it in both hands to offer it to Mom. This, this is, is gonna, gonna suck, suck, thought Benny. But to Benny's surprise, Mom scooped up the attitude adjuster and hung it from a jacket hook on the wall. I won't need this to paddle you tonight. Your father has already introduced you to the attitude adjuster. But if you give me trouble, I reserve the right to give you the full treatment. Is that clear, Benita? Benny nodded silently with undisguised relief before remembering to add, Yes, am Mom pulled a white jar of Arnica cream from her back pocket. Lie across my lap. I want to check the damage from Papa's paddling. Recognizing the ointment from the times Mom had nursed her aches and pains over the years, Benny eagerly settled herself across Mom's lap without protest. When she felt something pinch and tug at her panties, Benny instinctively reached back to pull them up, her face burning. Mom landed a playful pat across the words, It ain't gonna spank itself, on Benny's underwear. Really, Benny? How am I supposed to apply the lotion with these in the way? Hands away, and quit stalling. Feeling babyish, Benny's eyes darted desperately from her own bottom, to mom, to dad, and back to her bottom. But? Mom landed a firm swat at precisely the same spot. Now? Benny's hands flew in front of her, and she instinctively lifted her hips to allow mom to denude her derriere. Mom whistled at the sight. Woo, Nellie. You've done a thorough job, Bart. I almost feel bad that I have to spank your daughter again. Benny's face burned hot with shame. Her whole body felt chilly in contrast to the heat radiating off her red cheeks, both before and below. But as Mom applied the cooling, soothing lotion, Benny breathed a sigh of relief. Slap! Benny bucked up in surprise as Mom landed her palm across her left butt cheek, still smooth and glistening from the freshly applied lotion. Before, the ache of the paddling had left Benny's sense of pain numbed, her sensation of each spank becoming almost muddled. But now, Benny could feel the fresh sting of the first slap just as clearly as the first swat Dad had given her earlier. The sensation of Mom's palm contrasted with the deeper ache left in her muscles by the paddle, which the ointment was relieving even as the spanking began. As the second slap landed across her right cheek, Benny felt a prickling heat flare up on the surface of her bottom as expected, but there was something off. It was as though the cooling sensation was evaporating, like she had just sat her behind down on some burning concrete that had been cooking in the Arizona sun. Oh, and by the way, Benny, I made this cream especially for you today. It has some special ingredients. Care to guess what's in it? said Mom in a sing-song voice as she placed the tub down in front of Benny's eyes for easy examination. As the prickling heat spread across Benny's backside, Benny noticed that Mom wasn't landing any more spanks. It was the cream. Ah, uh, Arnica? Benny asked, stupidly, her mind starting to fog as she examined the bottle before her. Mom unscrewed the lid and applied another dollop of the cream to her dominant hand. That's the main ingredient. I knew that paddling would leave you with a blistered bum bum, so the arnica will help soothe your poor glutes, but I also mixed in a little ginger and capsicum. Notice anything unusual? Pop! Mom landed the third spank across Benny's crack, using the same gesture to apply another generous layer of lotion, then paused the spanking to knead Benny's cheeks like dough, helping the ointment soak deeper into the already deep red flesh. Benny curled and uncurled her toes as the sting began to build on its own, now clearly separate from the spanking itself. It's hot, hollered Benny, more surprised than hurt. It wasn't even altogether unpleasant. The lotion was soothing, but with every passing second, the hot prickle on the surface of her skin was building to a consistent buzz. Ooh, you're right, Benny. I can feel it on my palm already. Well, now I know I used enough. 
I'm not happy with your deliberate disobedience, Benny, but I also feel sorry for you. So I decided to use a little burning cream to give you your second spanking, without giving you a second spanking. No risk of bruising. Benny hummed as she felt the cream start to do its magic. It wasn't blinding pain, but it was like having the moment a spank landed frozen in time, all across her bottom. So, are you still going to spank me? Is this, eep? This is what I get, instead of a paddling? Mom shook her head. I promised you a paddling, and I intend to deliver. But don't worry, I won't be using the attitude adjuster. I think you'll remember this? Mom waved her hand to Dad, and accepted a toy plastic paddle from him. The same one Benny remembered from all those years ago. From now on, Benny, the rule in this house is, whenever you are home late, for every ten minutes past your curfew, you can expect one full minute of paddling with the plastic paddle. Of course, you were home several hours past your curfew tonight. Benny's lip trembled as she tried to perform the necessary math in her head. If that was the case, Benny had easily earned at least twenty solid minutes of paddling tonight. Mom smiled supportively as she tapped Benny's booty with the plastic paddle. But I'm only giving you ten minutes of paddling tonight, just to give you an idea of what to expect in future. This is a completely separate punishment from the paddling you can also expect for any act of deliberate disobedience, which will always merit the attitude adjuster. Do you understand? Benny winced as she felt the light love taps flare up the prickle across her cheeks. She imagined the very first time she had earned a trip across Mommy's knee and a date with the plastic paddle all those years ago. All the fight had been spanked out of her long ago. Benny's only hope was to be a good little girl and pray for mercy. Yes, Mommy. Mom's smile was full of love. How could she stay mad at her little angel? Then, let's begin. Mom landed firm swats of the plastic paddle, slowly at first, before building to a brisk rhythm. Unlike the attitude adjuster, where each and every stroke left a searing mark like a grill against meat, the plastic paddle was more like a slow cooker. Benny didn't have time to really think about the individual slaps, but she had all the time in the world to think about their cumulative effect. Watching the 10-minute timer on Mom's phone out of the corner of her eye, Benny felt every second of every minute drag on. A watched pot never boils indeed. The initial soothing effect of the arnica had helped Benny temporarily control her tears. After only one minute of the slow but steady spanking, the soothing coolness of the cream had left and her tears had returned. Benny buried her face, trying to wipe them away against her comforter. Was she really going to cry like a baby again? Just from getting spanked by this goofy toy paddle that she hadn't worried about in years? At the five-minute mark, Mom gradually increased the tempo of the spanking again. Benny kept lifting her head to check the clock, expecting to see that her ten minutes were up, only to realize it had only been a few agonizing seconds. At the six-minute mark, Benny's resolve crumbled and she started to weep softly, mewing the occasional, I'm so sewy, or, Please, mommy. By the seven-minute mark, Benny was sobbing freely, unable to articulate a single sentence. After eight minutes, Benny took deep, heaving breaths between her wails. Unable to see the clock behind the mist of her tears, Benny was unaware when the countdown began for the final minute of her ordeal, but she did become aware that she had the hiccups. The angry stinging across her bottom had built to the point that Benny was actually feeling nostalgic for the numbing blows of the attitude adjuster. As her consciousness began to return, Benny's first concrete thought was, Is it ever going to end? Am I going to be spanked forever and ever? The timer rang, and Mom landed one final slap of the plastic paddle for good measure. Time's up. I'd say your rump's medium rare, just the way I like mine cooked. Benny felt Mom guide her up off her lap, and just as Benny began to perform a furious war dance and rub her bottom thoroughly, she was ordered at attention before both her parents. Still bare-bottomed, Benny folded her hands neatly in front of her to preserve her last shred of modesty.
and to help resist the urge to massage the sting away. Sniffling, Benny watched as Mom hung the plastic paddle on a hook to the left of the attitude adjuster. Then Dad hung Grandma's long-handled clothes brush on a hook to the right. Benny felt a thrill travel up her spine as she spotted the brush, remembering it with the nearly same fear that she now attached to the attitude adjuster. Benny hung her head as Dad looked her in the eye, but he lifted her chin delicately so that she could see he was no longer angry with her. Very good, Benny. You've been punished enough. Your mother and I are satisfied, but remember that we can do this again any time you step out of line. We didn't use Grandma's brush today, but if you ever trespass on that construction site again, I'll use that to give you another ten minutes of spanking, and not the toy paddle. Is that understood? Benny's hiccups interrupted her words. Yes, sir. Hick. I'll never hick. Do it again. Hick. You. Hick. You won't have to do that. I hick promise. I hope not. Mom handed Benny her the infamous, it ain't gonna spank itself panties. Benny looked at them in disbelief before pulling them on in relief, despite the scream of protest from her buttocks as the cloth snapped against them. You're not? Hick gonna throw these? Hick! Away? They're a bit cheeky, but I'm not opposed to them. If you shape up your act, you may keep them. If not, you'll lose them, in more sense than one. Benny hugged her mom and dad and they all exchanged tearful kisses, loving promises, and tender words. The second she was alone, Benny clutched her buttocks in both hands, unable to soothe away the sting entirely, but she found it helped. As she dive-bombed onto her bed, laying on her stomach, her phone caught her eye, and she remembered someone else she had to apologize to. Chapter 5. Confession and Absolution Benny texted Blake. Hey, B. Sorry about what I wrote earlier. Sad face emoticon. Hey, B. Did you go to the construction site? I did. How did you know? Your mom and dad called me asking if you were here, and I guessed. Did you tell them where I went? I did. Sorry for telling on you, but it was kind of obvious. Don't be sorry. I got caught anyway. You did the right thing. I'm the one who should be sorry. Wincing emoticon. Well, are you sorry? I am. Don't you believe me? You told me you weren't going to the construction site, remember? I felt like an idiot when your parents called. Cringing, Benny looked back at her older texts, and sure enough Blake was right. She was tempted to make excuses, whine that she only said she didn't feel like it, not that she wasn't going, as if it mattered. I'm sorry for that too. Man, I sucked today. Frowning emoticon. Benny watched her phone for a full minute. Just as she was about to give up and go to sleep, Blake replied. I forgive you. Shocked, emoticon. Just like that? Tell you what, tell me you're sorry in person tomorrow, then I'll tell you I forgive you in person. I have a feeling you're really sorry. Consider this text your pre-forgiveness I owe you. Benny snickered, then copied one of her favorite emotes from her app. Crying guy emoticon. K. Consider this text your pre-apology IOU. As Benny waited, hoping for one more word from Blake, a devious thought occurred to her. I got spanked tonight. You deserve one for real. I got one for real. Peach emoji. Clapping hands emoji. No way. Spanked butt emoticon. My butt is bright red right now. Mom and dad both took turns. Picks or it didn't happen. Sly. Thumbs up emoticon. Benny leapt out of bed and examined her rump in the mirror. She was tempted to send Blake a full moon shot with her flipping the bird, just to shut him up. But at the last moment, she pulled her panties back up. Goofy, blushing face emoticon. No photos, you perv. Some of the red marks will still be there by tomorrow. Sending love moi emoticon. I'll show you then when I apologize. Wait, no joke? They really spanked you? No joke. Talk tomorrow. Signed, B. Waving by emoticon. Don't go. You can't just drop a bomb like that on me and say good night. Don't go. You can't just drop a bomb like that on me and say good night. Are you okay? I'm sorry, I thought you were teasing me. Embarrassed face emoticon. My butt hurts. But I'm okay. 
peaceful face emoticon. But you told me they stopped spanking you? When you turn 12, you're too old for a spanking. Crying Geno emoticon. Not anymore, I'm not. Anyway, you were right. Hiding face with shame emoticon. I deserved it. I'm sorry you got in trouble. Hope it doesn't happen again. Me too. I promise not to go to the construction site again. I believe you. It sounds like you learned your lesson already. I think so, but I still feel bad. Sad face emoticon, crying tears emoticon. I got spanked for breaking my promise to mom and dad, but I also lied to you. Minnie licked her lips as she typed the words she knew would seal her fate one way or the other. Do you think I deserve a spanking for that too? There was a pregnant pause. Benny pursed her lips and found her throat and eyes were dry and chafed from crying so much earlier. Ah, what kind of question was that? He must think I'm a weirdo. As she lay on her stomach in bed, Benny looked back at her glowing red bottom. Who was she kidding? Blake would just think she was a bratty baby for still getting spanked at her age, and she was. All she'd accomplished today was to convince her parents to spank her until her late forties and to lose Blake's trust and respect, along with any sense of self-respect, forever. The ding of the text alert snapped Benny out of feeling sorry for herself. We'll talk about it tomorrow, when I accept your apology. Love you, Benny. Signed, B. I love you, Emoticon. Tomorrow it is. Signed, B. Benny picked herself out of bed and stumbled through the darkness to find the three spanking implements now hanging on her bedroom wall. Grasping the attitude adjuster, she carried it to bed with her, tracing her finger over the engraved letters and images to find the cartoon image of the suffering little girl. A good bare-bottomed spanking, whispered Benny to herself, as she planted a soft kiss on the surface of the implement that had been used to chastise her. She had a feeling that it would come in handy, starting tomorrow. The end. Spanks for watching. If you enjoy my spanking stories, don't forget to subscribe and check out my DeviantArt and Patreon for more stories. You may spank it once.